OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. It's an anxiety disorder where you have obsessive thoughts that you ruminate on that can only be alleviated by compulsions. But the compulsions only alleviate for a short time until the obsessive thought comes back up again. We estimate that about 1 in 50 people in the UK have this. That's about a million people who suffer from the condition. Um, it affects men, it affects women, it affects people across the age span. On a bad day, it can be quite intrusive and it can be with me on a, on a take. And what I try and do at best is just try and concentrate hard on the acting and the line, remembering the lines and just try and hold it off until the end of the take. And it can be an exhausting daily battle. At its worst, I was dreaming OCD. So uh, it was pretty full on. It was a 24 hour existence living with this, this illness. So I had no escape from it for many, many years. My OCD took the form of contamination. I believed, or my OCD led me to believe that I was going to contract HIV or hepatitis just by stepping outside of my front door. At its height, I was housebound, unable to leave the house for fear of contracting a deadly disease, believing that everything was contaminated. Leaving the house meant coming home to face hour after hour of, of cleaning rituals to decontaminate myself. So it left me a complete recluse in my own home. I can't emphasise enough how drastically my life has changed having, now that I've overcome OCD. Even little things like I, I love music, but when I had OCD, it was really hard uh, for, for me to go to CD shops because uh, a lot of my compulsive behaviour related to tapping things there. So it's difficult to, to kind of flick through the CDs in a CD shop and you know, tiny things like that. I do stand up now, and when I first uh, did my first stand up gig, um, I remember being really, really nervous about it, and, and I had no idea. Uh, you have no idea before you do stand up whether or not it's going to work or whether it's going to be funny. Uh, and being very, very nervous, but I remember that uh, the thought that I'd overcome OCD. I, um, you know, even this kind of scary room for the people that might shout things at me and might boo me, that, that's not as scary as OCD. There was a time when I couldn't go to the cinema because I would uh, obsess about the people sitting behind me. You know, why are they at the cinema and what, you know, what, what are they what they had for tea and why they chosen that film and what relation were they to each other and all that and it would be and I'd end up having to look at them and of course you know it was in, it, incredibly embarrassing. My point of view having worked with it, um, it, it is like living with an abusive partner that um, is constantly commenting on what you do, commenting on what you ought to be doing. It's it, it can you know to the core affect self-confidence, esteem, it could affect your mood, affect relationships. Uh, career aspirations. It also impacted on my whole family, on my husband and my children. They were being drawn into the compulsive behaviours. They were being made to wash their hands before they touched something or after they touched something. My husband had to wash his hands and have a shower before he could feed the baby. And the final straw came when my daughter, who was six, was actually copying my compulsive behaviours on her own. My life, since I've recovered from OCD and my other sort of mental health problems, it just doesn't compare. I mean, before I recovered, I didn't have a life. I was basically trapped in my room. It is hard, but I've got a job, I've got a husband, I'm studying, I've got friends and family. You know, life after OCD, it, it, it can happen, and it's bloody brilliant. OCD has had a big impact on my life ever since I was quite young, probably from around the age of 12, in everything I do. When it was getting bad, I kind of relied on things like sugar highs, a lot of coke, sleeping a lot. I used to sleep a lot just to kind of get away from OCD. But I think adapting in, in a healthy way, making sure I get enough rest, 
and just try and do things I enjoy. The best way I like to express myself is through, through drumming. Um, it's something I found when I was going through uh, a hard time where I could be myself and let something else do the talking. I think if, if one feels they have OCD, the first thing, the most important thing, is, is to get a proper diagnosis. So ask your GP for referral to psychiatrist or psychologist, get it, get it diagnosed. It's positive because you think, oh my gosh, you know, this, this thing that I've been feeling has a name, um, it means, you know, people have looked into it, there's things that I can control. You may feel you have to be defined by it, you don't. <laughs> OCD is a part of you, it doesn't represent you. Once you've got the diagnosis, get the right type of, not only medical support, but also that really great kind of social support and you know um, just just find other people who've had it who've been there that can talk to you and I think that's something that OCD UK does really well. The challenge is, is just getting through a bad day and you must strive to to beat it. This is why I'm standing in front of the Rover's return that's my customer's last stand the fact that I'm here has meant that I've I've, I've won a few of the battles. I think the main thing that I wish I'd known when I was in the deepest, darkest depths of it was that um, there are other people out there that are going through similar things and that it is beatable. With OCD, I inhibited every aspect of my life and now that I don't have OCD, I feel a lot more confident and uh, a lot more free to do what I want to do. I fantasise about a, a, a life without the illness. I'm not going to I'm not going to let it win. It's won quite a few battles, but it won't win the war. <laughs> I'm Nikki Durham. I'm 28 years old and an OCD survivor. My OCD is a bit different from checking and contamination. In fact, I'm the world's untidiest and messiest person and very disorganised. My OCD took the form of debilitating and nasty intrusive thoughts. Some call it pure as it's in the mind. It can manifest itself as horrible sexual and religious thoughts, which come into my mind and stick there. They're based on a trauma I suffered as a little girl and on my worst fears. I don't want them and will do anything to be rid of them. The only way I can get relief is to do mental and physical compulsions like analysis, going over and over them for hours, plus doing things a certain number of times in order to feel safe and free myself from them, for a while at least. These thoughts made me feel trapped and suicidal for nearly seven years. It was terrible. I didn't want to go out of the house and had zero confidence, plus feeling worthless and hating myself. But, due to amazing therapy, I'm now recovering. I cannot stress enough how important it is to find the right therapist, even if it takes you years and several goes like it did for me. Just don't give up, as you will find the right one. Trust your instincts, as this person plays an important part in your life, and you'll know when you meet that therapist who just presses the right buttons. Through good therapy, I'm now much happier. I'm working, and I'm now leading a normal, independent life. Do you know I was told that my OCD was so severe that it could never be cured? But with the right help, I proved them wrong.